So this is what your three-toed sloth will look like when you're finished. You'll have movable arms and movable legs. And you can see the eyes have a really pretty wreath in them. Safety doll eyes. For this crochet project, you're going to need your 3.75 millimeter crochet hook, as well as a pair of scissors and a tapestry needle or darning needle. You're going to need a 21 millimeter safety doll eye, your favorite ones. And I like the ones with the metal or the plastic backing. For the nose, you're going to need a 25 millimeter triangle nose. Now with these nose noses, I got them from Fab Lab, but the only thing about these that I have to let you know is the backing is really tough to get on. So you may need a device to help you push the, de the backing on. If you can find the metal or plastic backings, I think those are better, easier to snap on. But just any triangular um, nose, approximately 25 millimeters in size, would work for this project. You can always embroider the nose too if you need to. This is what you're finished face would look like with the nose and the safety doll eyes. For the yarn, you're going to need three different colored browns. For the main color, if you like mine, I used Cafe Latte, and this is just a Red Heart Medium 4 100% acrylic yarn. You need one skein. And then you need a really light colored brown, almost beige. So this is a little bit darker than beige color, and it's also a Medium 4 100% acrylic yarn. And you're going to need a darker chocolate brown to go um, for the behind the eyes and this is for the face and the claws and this is for the main color. You're also going to need a little bit of a black colored yarn for the smile. So we're going to start with the head and again I'm using my main colored yarn which is Cafe Latte and we're going to start with um, the magic circle for the head. So you drape the yarn across your four fingers, use your thumb to stabilize Wrap the yarn around your two middle fingers twice and then hold it in place with your pinky and your thumb. Then you're going to take your 3.75 millimeter crochet hook, go under those two loops around the middle fingers, bring up a loop, yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through that loop for a slip knot. Now you're going to make six single crochet into the magic circle. So go in the magic circle, bring up a loop, two loops on the hook, yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through the two loops for one single crochet and we need a total of six single crochet in the magic circle. So here's my second one. Here's my third, fourth, fifth, and sixth. Then take your forefinger and thumb, hold the base of the six single crochet, you have these two loops on the opposite side. Go ahead and pull on one. If it doesn't close, let go and pull on the other one, but this one's closing. Just close the circle and then let go of the loop and grab the loose yarn in and pull on that. And then you can see how that closes the magic circle. Now you're going to work in rounds and you're going to place two single crochet in every stitch around. So grab both loops of the first stitch and make two single crochet into the same stitch and you're going to make two single crochet in every stitch around until you have a total of 12 stitches in the round and then come back. So two single crochet in every stitch in the round until you have 12 total in the, in the round and then come back. So now you should have 12 total stitches in the round and we're going to continue making increase rounds. So go ahead and grab a yarn marker, place it right where you left off and for the increase rounds that just means you're going to continue to add stitches in the round. So we're going to go keep making increased rounds in chronological order all the way up to one single crochet and seven stitches and then two single crochet into the next stitch. So for the first increase round you're going to make one single crochet into one stitch and then two single crochet into the next stitch. And you're going to repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. So one single crochet into one stitch and then two single crochet into the next stitch and then repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. So now you should have 18 total stitches in the round if you did it correctly and I'm not going to give you the stitch count for each round because all you have to do is just add six to the previous round. So we finished with 18 
For the next increase round, you just add six to that and you should have 24 total stitches in the round. So again, right now we're at 18 total stitches in the round, if you did it correctly. Then just move your yarn marker up and the next increase round is one single crochet into two stitches. And then two single crochet into the next stitch. And you want to repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. So one single crochet into two stitches, two single crochet into the next stitch, repeating that pattern all the way around. Then for the next increase round, move your yarn marker up and make one single crochet into three stitches, and then two single crochet into the next stitch, repeating that pattern all the way around. Then for the next increase round, make one single crochet into four stitches, two single crochet into the next stitch, repeating that pattern all the way around. Then, you guessed it, one single crochet into five stitches, and then two single crochet into the next stitch, repeating that pattern all the way around, back to the yarn marker. Then for the next increase round, we have only two increase rounds left. This next increase round is one single crochet into six stitches and then two single crochet into the next stitch, repeating that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. Now for your last increase round, you're going to make one single crochet into seven stitches and then two single crochet into the next stitch, repeating that pattern all the way around. So now we finished all of our increase rounds and you should have ended with a stitch count of 54. So from here on out, we're not going to be increasing, so you're going to be maintaining your stitch count. Go ahead and move your yarn marker up, and now you're just going to make one single crochet in every stitch around for 12 rounds. So 12 rounds of only one single crochet in every stitch around. When you reach the yarn marker, you just keep on going, leave the yarn marker in place to mark your spot, and you just keep making one single crochet in every stitch until you have a total of 12 rounds and then come back. So now you should have 12 rounds of one single crochet in every stitch around. Then you're just going to leave a little bit of a loop where you left off. This is going to be towards the back of the head. And then just set this portion aside while we make the white portion, or not white, white portion, but the light brown portion that goes on the face behind the eyes. So we're going to be making this portion right here that goes behind the eyes this beige or light brown color. So we're going to start with a slip knot. So take your yarn, fold it over on itself to form a loop, then take your crochet hook, go right through the loop, hold the base of the loop with your middle finger and your thumb, go ahead and yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through the loop for a slip knot. Go ahead and cinch that knot down, cinch the loop around the crochet hook, and then we're going to make a chain. So I'm going to show you four chains on video tutorial, but you're going to be making a chain of 16. So just yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through the loop for one chain, two, three, four. So go ahead, finish a chain of 16, and then come back. So my starting chain is almost four inches. Then, after you finish a chain of 16, you're going to make a single crochet into the second chain from the hook. So count back one, two, go into that second chain from the hook, bring up a loop, you have two loops on the hook, yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through both for a single crochet. Then you're going to make one single crochet in every stitch back across, which will give you a stitch count of 15 when you're finished. So one single crochet in every stitch back across. And then when you finish this row, you should have a stitch count of 15. Now, to move up to the next row, you're going to chain one, turn your work, and you're going to make a single crochet into the same stitch. So you're going to go in the same stitch with your crochet hook and then make a single crochet. So that first chain one counts as a stitch. So you can barely see it, but that's your first stitch and then your second stitch. Go into the next stitch and make one single crochet. And you're going to make one single crochet in every stitch back across except for the last stitch. In the last stitch, you're going to make two single crochet into the same stitch. So now you should have a total of 17 stitches after you finish that row. Then you're going to repeat this. You're going to chain one, turn your work, make a single crochet into the same stitch. And remember that chain one counts as your first stitch, so don't forget that you have that chain one on the end when you're making your stitches. Then I made another single crochet into the same stitch. Then you're going to make one single crochet in every stitch back across except for the last stitch. In the last stitch you're going to make two single crochet into the same stitch. 
And what you're doing is you're gradually making an angle on both sides, increasing angle. So now you should have 19 total stitches after finishing that row. Then you're going to chain one, turn your work, and this is the last row where we're going to be increasing by two stitches. You're going to make a single crochet into the same stitch, and then you're going to make one single crochet into the next stitch, and one single crochet in every stitch back across except for the last stitch. In the last stitch you're going to make two single crochet into the same stitch. So now you have a stitch count of 21 and you can see how you have a slight angle on both sides. So now we're going to maintain the stitch count of 21 for two more rows. So to do that you just chain one, turn your work, and this time you're not going to go into the same stitch. You're going to go into the next stitch over. So chain one counts as your first stitch for this row. Go into the next stitch and make a single crochet. And then you're going to make one single crochet in every stitch back across. And when you finish, you should still have a stitch count of 21. And then come back. So now you should still have a stitch count of 21. We're going to make one more row of 21 stitches. So just chain one, turn your work, make a single crochet into the next stitch, and one single crochet in every stitch back across. And when you finish this row, you'll have a stitch count of 21 still. So now go ahead and leave a little bit of a loop where you left off and you're going to fold your work in half and then you're going to place a stitch marker into the center to mark the center. Then you're going to take and turn your work. So no chain one, you just turn your work and you're going to make a single crochet into the next stitch and one single crochet into each of the next stitches. So here's my second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, and then ninth. So I went nine stitches and that brings me to my stitch marker. Then you're just going to turn your work and make a single crochet into the next stitch for one, next stitch for two single crochet, next stitch for three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Then turn your work, make a single crochet into the next stitch for one, next stitch for two, three, four, five, six, and seven. You can see how you're creating a little upward half circle above the bottom portion here. Then just turn your work, go into the next stitch for one single crochet, next stitch for two, next stitch for three, four, five, and six. Then for our last one, you're going to turn your work, go into the next stitch for one, next stitch for two, three, and four. Then you're going to slip stitch into the fifth stitch. So I'm going to the fifth stitch, yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and bring the yarn through both loops on the hook for a slip stitch. Then you can go ahead and finish off, yarn over, and pull enough yarn through to help sew this portion onto the head. And then we're going to repeat this on the opposite side. So we're going to go on the opposite side and repeat the same thing. You can see how you make a little half circle above the bottom portion of this beige or light brown portion. So now you can take and remove the yarn marker or stitch marker. And since we had nine on this side, you want to have nine on this side. So I skipped one stitch here and then you count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So now you're going to join, not in the, leave one stitch unworked here, and then go to the next one over, and then just join your yarn. Go ahead and chain one, and then tie a knot, 
and then we're going to be making single crochet stitches and at the same time go ahead and bury your loose yarn end. So carry the loose yarn end as you work. Go ahead and chain one, then go into the next stitch for two, next stitch for three, next stitch for four, next stitch for five, next, next stitch for six, next stitch for seven, and then go ahead and cut that loose yarn end, get it out of the way. And then you finish your last two, eight and nine. Now we're just going to turn our work just like we did on the opposite side all the way down to five. And you slip stitch into the fifth stitch, but you just turn your work, go into the next stitch for one, next stitch for two, next stitch for three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. If you need to go into the same one, if you can't get into that eighth stitch, just go in the same stitch for eight. So you should have eight for that row. Then just turn your work, go into the next stitch for one, next stitch for two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Then just turn your work, make a single crochet into the next stitch for one, two, three, four, five, and six. So now we have our last row. Go ahead and turn your work, make a single crochet into the next stitch for one, next stitch for two, next stitch for three, four, and then just slip stitch on the end here. Then you can go ahead and finish off, just yarn over and pull enough yarn through to sew, help sew this portion onto your work. So now you have the, be the beige portion that goes behind the eyes. You can see how you have two half circles on top, which is what you want. So now you can get the head and we're going to sew this beige or light brown portion onto the front of the head. So the loop where you left off, it goes towards the back. Then take your beige or light brown portion and you're going to line it up and sew it in place. So you want to line it up so that the, it's on the front, so the loop of the yarn is towards the back. And then you want to make sure it's one round up from the bottom of the head. Then take your tapestry needle take the loose yarn end, that small loose yarn end, and you're going to bring that through first. So you just take, line it up, and then bring that loose yarn end through to the opposite side. Then you're going to take the long loose yarn end that you left for sewing, and then you're just going to take and sew around the border. Make sure you hold it in place so it doesn't go crooked. It should line up above that last round of the head. Then just take and sew in and out, making sure that it stays straight. And then you're going to sew all around the border, securing it to the head. So go ahead, finish sewing this beige portion in place, and remember you're sewing all around the border, making sure that it stays straight. This is what mine looks like after I sewed it in place. Now we're going to make the dark brown portion that goes behind the eyes. So we're going to be making this dark brown portion that goes behind the eyes. Set this portion aside for now, we'll come back to it. You're going to be making two of these, so for the first one, they're both made the same way. You're going to fold it over on itself to form a loop, put your crochet hook through the loop, hold the loop with your middle finger and your thumb, yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through the loop for a slip knot. Go ahead and cinch that knot down, cinch the loop around your crochet hook, and now you're going to make a chain of eight. I'm just going to show you four of them. So just yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through the loop for one, two, three, 
and four. So go ahead, finish a chain of eight, and then come back. So now, after you finish your chain of eight, you're gonna make a single crochet into the second chain from the hook. So count back one, two, make a single crochet, and then you're gonna make one single crochet in each stitch back across, except for the last stitch. In the last stitch, you're gonna make three single crochet into the same stitch. So one single crochet in each stitch back across, except for the last stitch. So I'm almost there, so I'll just work it with you. So in this last stitch, you're gonna make three single crochet into the same stitch. There's one, two, and then while you're making them, you can turn your work, because we're gonna be working on the opposite side in rounds. So there's three, and you wanna go behind your loose yarn end. Snag my yarn. Then go into the next stitch on the opposite side, and then you're gonna go behind your loose yarn end and make a single crochet. And you're gonna make one single crochet in every stitch back across on the opposite side. So after you finish a certain number, then you can go ahead and cut that loose yarn end. So I'm almost there. I'm gonna go ahead and cut the loose yarn end. And then in your last stitch on this opposite side, you can see how you have a circle forming. Then one single crochet into the next stitch, and then make three single crochet into that last stitch. So there's one, two, and three. Then you're gonna make a slip stitch into that first stitch. So yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and bring the yarn through both loops for a slip stitch. Then you can go ahead and finish off. Just yarn over and pull enough yarn through to help sew this brown portion onto the face. So you're gonna need two of these. Go ahead and make your second one. So here are mine, I have two of them. And I have approximately 17 stitches in the round. Don't worry if you're off by one stitch, that's fine. So now you're gonna get your safety doll eye and you're gonna place it. You can see that you have one stitch here on the end. You're gonna go one stitch in. and you have like one stitch on the opposite side of the safety doll eye. And you want it this way so you can sew it in place. It makes it a little bit easier to sew it down. So after you get your safety doll placed into the brown portion, then you're gonna take your safety latch and place it onto the back. So go ahead and repeat that for both of them. So now you wanna set these eye portions aside because we're gonna place the nose first. So you want to take and line up the nose right in the center and then just kind of wiggle it till it goes all the way through. This is what my nose looks like after I place the safety latch in place. Now you're ready to position the eyes. So for mine, I left a stitch between the nose and the dark chocolate brown color. And then you just take your tapestry needle and you sew it in place. And you want it to angle down too. So make sure that the brown portion angles down. And then you're just gonna sew all around the border. Just go in and out and sew all around the border of the brown portion, the dark brown portion. Now when you get to the bottom of the safety doll eye, I'm going to show you how I do that. I just grab a little bit of the brown portion under the safety doll eye. And then you just sew all around the border of the dark brown portion and then come back. And you can see how I grab the top portion to the dark brown. This is how mine looks after I sewed the one eye. Then you're gonna repeat the process on the opposite side. Make sure that your safety doll eyes line up and that the angle is the same on both sides. You want it to be symmetrical. And this is what mine looks like after I sewed the dark brown portion down. Now we're ready to make the little smile. So you're gonna get your black yarn on your tapestry needle. And then I lined up, used the nose as a landmark, and I line up 
with the nose. So I'm going to come up right here. So you can see how I'm in line with the outer edge of the nose. And then I'm about a couple rows up from the bottom. And then leave a little loose yarn end on the inside for tying a knot. And then you're going to go over one stitch and down one stitch at an angle for the side of the smile. And then you can go ahead and tie a knot on the inside. Then you're just going to take and go over a couple of stitches straight across and then go back down in and then you have the bottom part of this smile and you could stop here if you want to have like a half smile but I'm going to go ahead and finish this smile so you go up one and over one and you can see how you're in line with the opposite side of the nose then just go back down where you came out on the bottom and then you have your smile and go ahead and tie a knot on the inside and trim your loose yarn ends then you have your cute face finished so now we're ready to close the head so we just take and go right where we left off on the back of the head and we're going to make a decrease round go ahead and grab your yarn marker place it right where you left off and for this first decrease round, you're going to make one single crochet into seven stitches. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So one single crochet into seven stitches, and then we're going to single crochet two stitches together or make a decrease stitch. So just go into the next stitch, bring up a loop. Go into the next stitch, bring up a loop. You have three loops on the hook, yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through all three loops for a decrease stitch or single crochet two stitches together. So you're going to repeat this pattern all the way around one single crochet into seven stitches, and then single crochet two stitches together, repeating that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. So now you should have a total of 48 total stitches in the round, and I'm not going to give you the stitch count each round because all you have to do is subtract six stitches. So now, for the next decrease round, you're going to make one single crochet into six stitches and then single crochet two stitches together, repeating that pattern all the way around. And at any time as we're closing, you can go ahead and add craft stuffing and keep adding craft stuffing as you close. Then, for the next decrease round, you're going to make one single crochet into five stitches and then single crochet two stitches together, repeating that pattern all the way around. Then one and four, one single crochet into four stitches, and then single crochet two stitches together, repeating that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. You can see how the opening is getting smaller and smaller as we close. So for the next decrease round, you guessed it, we're going to make one single crochet into three stitches, and then single crochet two stitches together, repeating that pattern all the way around. At this point, you can shape the head and make sure that you have enough craft stuffing in there. And you keep adding craft stuffing as you need. Don't overstuff to where you have huge gaps. You don't want gaps in your crochet work. Then just move your yarn marker up and make one single crochet into two stitches and then single crochet two stitches together repeating that pattern all the way around. Then for the next decrease round you're going to make one single crochet into one stitch and then single crochet two stitches together repeating that pattern all the way around. Then you can remove your yarn marker and now you're just going to make single crochet two stitches together until you're almost closed. Then we're going to slip stitch it closed. So I'm going to close it with you. So I'm making single crochet two stitches together until I'm almost closed. One more should do it. Then I'm going to take and slip stitch close. So I'm going to skip a stitch, go into the next stitch yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and bring the yarn through both loops on the hook for a slip stitch. And you're going to slip stitch all the way around until the head is closed. So one more should do it. Then you can go ahead and finish off. Just yarn over and pull enough yarn through to bury into your work. And this is how your work should look so far. 
Then just take and put the loose yarn in on your tapestry needle. Go right in where you finished off and come out anywhere on the head. And then pull that loose yarn in through. See how it varies the loose yarn in? Then just trim the loose yarn in. And now we finished the head. Now for the body, you need your main colored yarn. And we're going to start in the mag with the magic circle, just like we did for the head. Wrap it around your two middle fingers twice. Hold it with your pinky and your thumb. Take your, tap or your crochet hook, go under the two loops around the middle fingers, bring up a loop. Yarn over, turn the hook upside down, go through the loop for a slip knot. Then you're going to make six single crochet into the magic circle. So there's one, two, three, four, five, and six. Then just hold the base of the six single crochet close the loop then turn your work so that you're working in rounds and you're going to go into the first stitch in the round so we want to grab both loops and you're going to make two single crochet into every stitch around until you have a total of 12 stitches in the round so two single crochet in every stitch around until you have a total of 12 stitches in the round now you should have 12 stitches in the round. Go ahead and turn your work over and pull on that loose yarn in on the back to close the center of the magic circle. And we're going to continue our increase rounds. So we're going to continue to increase the number of stitches in the round. And just like the head, we're going to go in chronological order all the way up to one single crochet into seven stitches and then two single crochet into the next stitch. So for the first round, you're going to make one single crochet into one stitch and then two single crochet into the next stitch. And then repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. So one single crochet in one stitch, two single crochet into the next stitch, repeating that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. Then for the next increase round, you're going to make one single crochet into two stitches and then two single crochet into the next stitch, repeating that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. Then you're going to make one single crochet into three stitches and then two single crochet into the next stitch. So now you see that we're making this the same way as the head. We're chronologically increasing the number of stitches. So go ahead, finish chronologically increasing the number of stitches and stop when you get to one single crochet into seven stitches and then two single crochet into the next stitch. When you're finished with all of your increase rounds, you should have a total of 54 stitches in the round. Go ahead and move your yarn marker up to where you left off. And now you're only going to make one single crochet in every stitch around for 22 rounds. So 22 rounds of one single crochet in every stitch. After you finish your 22 rounds of one single crochet in every stitch, you can go ahead and add craft stuffing to the body. And you're going to continue adding craft stuffing as we close the body. So now we're going to make a decrease round, which means we're going to decrease the number of stitches in the round. And we're going to go in chronological order. For the first decrease round, you're going to make one single crochet into seven stitches. There's three, four, five, six, and seven. And then you're going to single crochet two stitches together. So you go into the next stitch, bring up a loop, go into the next stitch, bring up a loop, yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through all three for a decrease stitch or a single crochet two stitches together. So go ahead and repeat this pattern all the way around one single crochet into seven stitches and then single crochet two stitches together repeating that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker then for the next decrease round make one single crochet into six stitches and then single crochet two stitches together repeating that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker you should see that it's gradually closing which is what we want then for the next decrease round make one single crochet into five stitches and then single crochet two stitches together repeating that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker then one single crochet into four stitches and then single crochet two stitches together repeating that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker 
Then for the next decrease round, make one single crochet into three stitches and then single crochet two stitches together, repeating that pattern all the way around. Then one single crochet into two stitches and then single crochet two stitches together, repeating that pattern all the way around. Then for the next decrease round, you're going to make one single crochet into one stitch and then single crochet two stitches together, repeating that pattern all the way around. So now you can go ahead and remove the yarn marker and you can make single crochet two stitches together until you're almost closed. So single crochet two stitches together until you're almost closed and then we're going to slip stitch the rest of the way. So You can see how I'm almost close. I'm going to go ahead and slip stitch. So you're going to skip a stitch, go under the next stitch, yarn over, turn the hook upside down and bring the yarn through both loops on the hook for a slip stitch and just keep turning and making slip stitches until the body is completely closed. Then once it's closed you can go ahead and finish off just yarn over, turn the hook upside down and bring enough yarn through to bury into your work. Then just take your tapestry needle, put it onto the loose yarn end Go right where you finished off and then come out anywhere on the body to bury the loose yarn end. Now we're ready to sew the head onto the body. So you're going to get the same colored yarn and your tapestry needle. And then you're just going to place the head. This is where I finished off on the body and then this is where I finished off on the head. You're just going to line up those two areas. Then just hold the head in place. And I usually start in the back towards the top of the body and go up into the head and come out the bottom portion of the head. And then you want to leave a little bit of a loose yarn end for tying a knot and burying into your work. And then I just go a stitch over where I came out on the head and then go back down into the body and come out right where I went in. You can always reposition the head. Then I'm just going to take and tie a knot then I'm going to reposition the head again and then I'm going to go about a stitch over and then go out into the body and then up and out the bottom portion of the head. And then I'm going to go a stitch over and then go down into the body and then come out on the other side. And you're going to skip spaces on the head and that's okay because you're going to make several rounds sewing the head in place. And then I came out of the body, so I'm going to go a stitch over on the body and then come up through the head and come out of the bottom of the head. And I'm always positioning the head too, repositioning the head. Then I'm going to go a stitch over on the head because I came out of the head, go down into the body and come out on the other side. And you just keep repeating this all the way around until the head is secured to the body. After you're happy sewing the head in place and it's nice and secure, then I usually come out right where I initially came, went in, and then I just tie another knot, and then take your tapestry needle, put it onto the loose yarn end, and then go right where you finished tying your knot and come out anywhere on the body to bury the loose yarn end, and then you just trim the loose yarn end and then repeat that with the other loose yarn end. And this is what mine looks like after I finish sewing the head in place. And now we're ready to make the arms and the legs. This is what they look like. I've already made three of them. You're going to need to make four the exact same way. We're going to be starting with the toes. So you're going to start with your very light colored brown yarn. I use the same color that I used for the face. So we're going to make three of the toes. I've already made two of them. You make them the same way. So you're going to start with your very light brown color and we're going to make a magic circle. 
just like we did before. So you wrap the yarn around your two middle fingers twice and then hold it in place. Then you're just going to bring up a loop, the yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through the loop for a slip knot. Then you're going to make eight single crochet into the magic circle. So you want eight single crochet. So here's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And then you're just going to close it the same way that you did before. You have the two loops on the opposite side, pull on one. If it doesn't close, let go and pull on the other one, but this one's closing. And then pull on the loose yarn end. Then you're going to turn your work and you're going to make one single crochet in every stitch around for six rounds. So what I do instead of using a yarn marker I'm just going to count and keep counting all the way up to 48 because six rounds of eight stitches six times eight is 48 so you just count all the way up to 48 and that will be your six rounds so here I have one two single crochet three single crochet four single crochet five six, seven, and eight. And then what you're going to do is pull on that loose yarn end to close the center of the magic circle and then turn the work so that the loose yarn end is on the inside of your work. And then you just keep con continuing to make single crochet stitches around. So this is my ninth single crochet in the round, tenth, and you may have to it may fold back on itself, but the more rounds that you make, then you can turn it inside out. So this is 11, single crochet. And I'm going to push it out so that the loose yarn is on the inside. This is my 12th single crochet, 13. And you keep making single crochets all the way until you reach 48. So here's 14. 15. You can see how you're starting to make the little cup. So go ahead, finish making one single crochet in every stitch until you reach 48, which is six rounds of eight stitches, and then come back. So now you can see that I have six rounds of one single crochet in every stitch around with a stitch count of eight for each round. So six times eight is 48. So I finished at 48 stitches. Then I'm going to make a slip stitch into the next stitch over. Just yarn over and pull the yarn through both loops on the hook for a slip stitch. Then you're going to finish off, just yarn over and just pull enough yarn through to bury the loose yarn end. So now you're just going to take your loose yarn end and tuck it into the center of the toe. And if you need help tucking it in, you can take your crochet hook, the other end of the crochet hook, and just kind of push it in. So you want both loose yarn ends tucked into the center of the toe. So go ahead, finish making three of these toes, and then come back. So now you should have finished three toes. Go ahead and grab two of them for now. And you want the end where you finished off to be towards the left, and then the one on the other toe should be facing the other area where you finished off, and put them together just like this. Then you're going to join your, on the edge, the right edge of the first toe, you're going to join your yarn. So you're going to bring in the main colored brown and then bring up a loop. Then chain one and tie a knot. Then you're just going to chain one then make a single crochet into the next stitch and a single crochet into the next stitch. Then you're going to take and grab the other toe and go into that first stitch on the side and bring up a loop and make a single crochet. You can see how you're joining the toes. and You're going to make one single crochet into three stitches on the second toe. And this is how your work should look so far. Then you're going to grab the third toe and place it so that the area that you finished off 
should be towards the inner aspect. So this is where I finished off on the third toe. Then you're going to take and grab the next stitch, bring up a loop, and make a single crochet. And that's how you join the three toes. Then you're going to go into the next stitch, and you're going to make a single crochet in every stitch until you reach the opposite side. So you can join the opposite side. So you can see how I'm making a single crochet in each of the stitches. And then I'm coming to the opposite side and I'm going to continue making a single crochet. So you can see how I continued making a single crochet all the way around. Then I'm going to go ahead and finish making single crochet the last one here. And then I'm going to take and join the center. So I'm going to go into the next stitch on the next toe. And then you just keep making a single crochet. So this one will probably have two or three. Then you can take and join. Maybe one more there. Then you can join with the other toe. until you reach where you started. And then I reached where I started. So you can see how the three toes are joined now. Here's the one side and the back side. Go ahead and bury the loose yarn end. So it's in one of the toes. And now we're going to want to make you may have different stitch counts than what I have. So for the first round, after I finished mine, I had 23 total stitches in the round, and I want to have 18 total stitches. So for the next decrease, the next decrease round, I need to have five decreases to bring me to 18, a stitch count of 18. And you can put the decrease stitches wherever you want in the round, as long as you have as many as you need to decrease to 18 stitches for the next round. So I'm going to show you how to do that. So I'm going to make, I'm going to go ahead and place a yarn marker to help me keep track of the stitch count. And then I'm going to make one single crochet into the next stitch. And then I'm going to go ahead and make one decrease stitch. So that'll count as my second. That's my first decrease stitch, but my second stitch in the round. So I have two stitches. I'm going to go ahead and just count the single crochet two stitches together because I need five of them. So that was my first one. Then I'm going to make one single crochet into each stitch until I'm ready to make my next single crochet two stitches together. I'm going to do that right here. So here's my second one. Second single crochet two stitches together. And then I'm just going to make one here, one single crochet, one single crochet. Now I'm going to make my third single crochet two stitches together on the edge here. And you can put them anywhere. There's no particular order for this round, as long as you have bring down your stitch count to 18. So you may only have three single crochet two, two stitches together, depending on how many stitches you had when you finished that first round. So I only need two more single crochet two stitches together to make my stitch count 18. And I could put them anywhere. So I make one single crochet into the rest of the stitches. I'm going to go ahead and make one right here. Single crochet two stitches together. And then one here. And then I'm going to make a single crochet two stitches together here. And that's my last one. And that should bring me to a stitch count of 18, which is what I want. So now I'm back to my yarn marker. So now I can count my stitches and make sure that I'm down to a stitch count of 18 in the round. So now I have 18 total stitches in the round. So I'm going to leave the yarn marker and I'm going to go ahead and continue making one single crochet in every stitch in the round until I have a total of 18 rounds of one single crochet in every stitch. So I need a total of 18 rounds of one single crochet in every stitch and I'm maintaining my stitch count of 18 for each round. So 
So after you finish your 18 rounds of one single crochet in every stitch, you can go ahead and remove your yarn marker and then place craft stuffing inside of the leg or arm. Now after you add the craft stuffing, we're ready to close. So you're just going to take and single crochet two stitches together until you're almost closed. So single crochet two stitches together and keep repeating that until you're almost closed. So you just go around making a single crochet and two stitches together. So go ahead, finish making single crochet, two stitches together until you're almost closed and then come back and then I'll slip stitch it closed with you. So now you can see that I'm almost closed, so I'm going to skip a stitch, go into the next stitch, yarn over and bring the yarn through both loops for a slip stitch. And I'm going to continue to slip stitch all the way around until the arm or the leg is completely closed. So one more should do it. Then go ahead and finish off, just yarn over and pull enough yarn through to bury into your work. Then you can take the loose yarn end, go right where you finished off and come out anywhere on the arm or the leg, depending on what you're making, they're all made the same way. Then you just need four of these, two of the arms and two for the legs. Now we're ready to attach the arms, so we're going to do the arms first, so grab two of the finished arms, and I like to use the Dritz Home Upholstery Needles, and the size that I usually like to use is the 10 inch. You can see it's long enough to go through the arms and the body. Makes it a lot easier. You want to make sure to get enough yarn on your upholstery needle that you'll be able to go through the arms and the body twice. I like to go twice just to make sure it's nice and secure. So the first thing you're going to do is grab one of the arms and you want the toes to be on their side. So you don't want to go in sideways like this. So make sure that the arm, the toes are up and down like this. Then take and go through the side, the center, towards the top and come out on the opposite side at the same level. And then just bring the yarn through. And you want to leave enough of a loose yarn end that you can tie a knot when you're finished. Then you want to take and line up the arm on the body where you want it. So I have the top of the arm in line with the neck. And also you want it to be midline with the head. And then once you know where you're going to go into the body, that's where you're going to go with your upholstery needle. And then you're going to come out on the opposite side at the same level. And then just bring the yarn through. So you could do this with your, your tapestry needle. I just find it easier to use the longer needle. So I was glad when someone had made that recommendation to me. Now that's, I always use my upholstery needle. But you can see that it's very long and sharp, so you have to be careful um, around children. Then just take the other arm and then you're going to go through again remember the toes you want them up and down go right through the top of the other arm and then come out on the opposite side at the same level and I leave about one to two inches between the arms and the body so between the arms and the body you want approximately one to two inches then you're going to go back through so you want to go a stitch away from where you exited. So one stitch away from where you exited. So you can see I exited right there. So I'm going to go right beneath it. And then come out on the opposite side, one stitch away from where you entered. And then you're going to go through the body. Go ahead and pull the yarn through because you don't want to loop on this side, bring that through. Then go through the body one stitch away from where you exited and then come out one stitch away from where you entered the body. And again you want to keep one to two inches 
of yarn between the arm and the body and you don't want the yarn to cross so make sure that you don't go through the or cross through the opposite yarn you want to keep them separated one stitch away otherwise when you go to pull the yarn strands to cinch the arms against the body you'll catch on the yarn and won't, it won't go through right so you can see I'm going to go a stitch away and then I'm going to go back and repeat the whole process one more time so go ahead repeat this whole process one more time and then come back so now I made my last entering and exiting the arms and the body so you can see I have four strands between the arms and the body then you can take and pull on your yarn so you can see I have a little bit of a loop there but I'm going to try to pull that through if you meet resistance just pull on one yarn strand at a time I'm going to try to bring this loop through So you can see I brought that loop through. Make sure that the arms are together. And like I said, pull on one yarn strand at a time if you meet any resistance. And then just kind of move the arms up and down to see if they're in position the way you want them, and mine are. Then you can take and pull again on the yarn strands and then tie a knot. Then I'm going to trim the loose yarn in so I can bury them. Then you can use your tapestry needle and take and bury the loose yarn ends. So you go right in where you tied your knot, come out on the opposite side, and then trim the loose yarn ends. So go ahead and bury your, your loose yarn ends. Then you can see how you have your arms and they move up and down which is what I like so I make most of my amigurumi with the movable arms and legs so you're going to attach the legs the same way except for the legs you want to make sure that you're not too high when you go through the body so you don't want your legs way up here you want them down to where your sloth can sit so make sure that when you go through the body that you're at a level where your sloth can sit also, the dimple that's created on the arm should be in line with the dimple on the legs. So you don't want the leg be, to be too far back or too far forward. You want it in line with the arm. So now you can see how I went in and out the same way that I did for the arms. Now I'm ready to cinch the legs to the body. And this is what mine looks like after I've cinched it to the body. And you can see how I have the dimples in line with each other. It's the same on the other side and then the sloth is able to sit as well and you can see how he has movable arms and legs. And your adorable sloth is all finished.